Good afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlothauer here in the Home Weather Office for July the 7th, 2023. In this update, we are tracking multiple severe weather days on the way for the United States, including heavy rainfall, some serious heat for the Deep South, including for the Desert Southwest with temperatures that could reach 115 to perhaps 120 degrees over the next few days. Now, if you're new to the channel and you really like these detailed weather updates, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. So looking at the visible satellite imagery from tropicaltidbits.com or Dr. Levi Cowan's website, a really awesome website to visit. There will be a link in the description below this video. So what we have been seeing lately has been some showers and thunderstorms. Some of them have been quite strong, capable of very large hail, damaging winds, and some heavy rainfall. And we can see another batch of thunderstorms popping up this afternoon across the Midwest because occasionally we get these troughs of low pressure that kind of dig down here. They kind of move this way. And as they do, they bring with it some disturbed weather. And that's what we're seeing today with these thunderstorms that are popping up across Oklahoma into, say, uh, portions of Iowa. But a newly mount of clustering of storms has recently really developed this afternoon across New Mexico, northern Texas, as well as eastern Colorado. And these storms, yet again, are moving east. So areas like, say, central Oklahoma, Kansas will be impacted this afternoon late evening into the overnight hours with more thunderstorms with more showers and storms popping up for the northeast and also for the extreme northern tier of the united states with the typical monsoon going on right now across the intermountain west especially across the northern rockies where we are seeing storms but otherwise the bigger picture is we are seeing relatively calm and quiet weather across the desert southwest with hot temperatures which we will be getting into of this video which really is causing a lot of concerns a lot of health problems especially over the four corners so now looking at the european model for this afternoon and evening for july the 7th 2023 so as i mentioned we do again have storms that are firing up here across the plains we got showers and storms going on across the eastern us as well as the southeast and the northeast so the european model sees this quite well with the storms also popping up across the northern rockies so going forward with time here you'll see um, the showers are going to continue through tomorrow this is saturday afternoon more showers more thunderstorms over the ozarks the upper midwest the great lakes so if you're doing anything outdoors if you're barbecuing if you're traveling if you're walking the dog if you're doing any outdoor activities tomorrow swimming that sort of thing just keep in mind the rain and thunder will be a danger to anyone outside because we're going to have lightning, we're going to have rain, wind, and maybe some hail with these storms. So just keep that in mind. I know a lot of people like to do things for the weekend. Just watch the sky if you are being impacted by these storms. But otherwise, if you want to go swimming and go in the pool, you can do so across California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico even, and portions there of, say, Utah, where we're going to see mainly clear skies maybe a couple of cloud buildups in the afternoon but we should see uh, kind of stay or steer clear of any rain chances in the mountains then by sunday july the 9th we have this storm that is going to be dropping southward and this is going to reinforce some cooler air for the northern tier of the u.s including for the great lakes as this moves into hudson bay while there's going to be more showers and more storms for the southeast, for the eastern seaboard, and the northeast through the next few days. This continues to be a um, kind of a game player for uh, Monday, July the 10th, with this upper level low kind of hanging out around, um, if you are in Hudson Bay, if you're in Quebec, Ontario, Canada, getting some disturbed weather this time of the year with, again, quiet weather across the West. Now, forwarding this all the way through, say, um, on Tuesday, we're going to have more impulses of energy. So more severe weather threats are going to be expected for July the 11th. This is Tuesday next week. So keep in mind, 
that anytime we get these perturbations, these little kinks in the flow at 500 millibars, we tend to get some disturbing weather that occurs underneath that. And that's why, say, areas like Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi might get some showers and storms on Tuesday, whereas also the Dakotas, including eastern Montana, might get a fair share of storms as well. And some of them could be strong, so keep that in mind. By uh, Wednesday morning and Wednesday afternoon, that disturbance moves into the Great Lakes here, producing maybe some severe weather, some organized severe weather, with more showers and storms continuing across the Deep South. So that's going to be the theme this week, where this northwest flow, okay, it's, it's coming in this way. There's going to be perturbations within that flow, and anytime you get that, we get MCSs, we get clustering of storms we can get organized uh, cellular development and yes there are hazards with those storms typically large hail strong winds and maybe a tornado or two to go along with that that continues all the way into thursday into friday as you can see here more of these uh, disturbances kind of move on by and each of them kind of leaving the threat for showers and storms kind of along to go with that and that can continue all the way through next saturday july the 15th. So now let's take a look at your temperature forecast because it is going to be the searing heat that is going to catch a lot of people's attention. We know how hot it's been and we know how hot it's going to be getting when you look at these air temperature forecasts. This is not your apparent temperature. This is the actual air temperature outside. So this is for this afternoon. And of course, the day is almost over here pretty much, so temperatures are heading down. Temperatures are pretty warm over the desert southwest with temperatures right around 100 to 105 degrees. But it's going to be the latter part of this weekend in early next week where it really gets dangerous. Let's go forward here in time. So let's go here to Saturday. You can see temperatures do warm up a little bit over Texas, over Arizona, over New Mexico. Temperature's about 100, maybe 105 degrees. Be very warm. That's going to be the theme for the latter part of the weekend here. Even for Texas, temperature's right around 90 to 100 degrees. Yeah, also for Phoenix, Arizona, pretty warm. Not so much up here across the northern tier. Temperature's in the low to mid 80s. More doubtful this time of the year since we're, after all, in early July, where it's typically quite warm. But sometimes we get an air mass that kind of disrupts the pattern a little bit. And we can see temperatures kind of head down, especially if you're in northern portion here of the U.S., like northern Minnesota, North Dakota, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. And you might enjoy temperatures in the upper 50s, low 60s, low 70s, depending on where you're at. Where a lot of this area down here can be very hot, between about 100, maybe 110, something in there. By Tuesday... Gets even hotter. Look at Texas again. Back all the way up to about 105 to 110 degrees. This is where it's been really hot lately. And it doesn't seem to change very much. Let's go all the way into Wednesday. Yeah, look at this. About 105, 110, even 115. Look at over here in Arizona. Maybe 110, 115 too. Temperatures here all the way in the 90s. In the Midwest... Even the eastern seaboard can be pretty hot for this time of the year in mid-July. And then let's go into Friday. Let's see if these temperatures warm up a little more. And they do. A little warmer here for Tucson, for Phoenix, for Palm Springs. And then, yeah, it kind of stays there for a while. Not as bad as what we first thought for California, but nevertheless, be warming up next week. For a lot of us that live in California. Now let's take a look at those temperature anomalies, okay? Because, yeah, there's some cooler weather kind of hanging about here across the Midwest or the northern tier of the United States with temperatures about 5 to 10 degrees below climatological averages. But look at here. This is where a lot of the warmer air has been. And this is where it's going to probably stay for a little while longer. For British Columbia, Alberta, Canada, temperatures there 5 to 15 degrees above normal. Pattern's going to change. Okay, let's go forward here. Let's see what's, what it's going to look like here on Wednesday. Okay, so, yeah, look at right here. going to be really warm. 5 to 15 degree temperatures uh, above normal for the four corners. 
we're going to get in some serious heat here. Excessive heat watches, heat warnings, how, some warmer temperatures for the Northeast. Cooler weather, thankfully, for the northern tier. You've been wanting it this year. You're going to get more of it, it looks like. So there's another system that comes down, and it really keeps the temperatures in check here for the northern tier of the U.S., while down here to the south, be very warm. Yeah, it's very warm, not El Nino-like by any means, and that's the next 9 to 10 days. So now, why is it going to be so warm, you might be asking? Well, let's take a look at our, our air mass forecast. Let's kind of take a look at this, right? This is a ridge, the subtropical ridge in the four corners for the deep south. You can even get an idea where the hotter air is. It's outlined right in here. This is where our hotter air likes to hang out. 594 deck meter ridge right over southern New Mexico. Got a good trough carved out here across the northern tier, including the Great Lakes. So that's why you're seeing temperatures below average. Even the freezing line making an appearance there over northern Manitoba, Canada. So yeah, it's going to be chilly up there because of that air mass that's pretty cool for this time of the year. But we can see that the pattern does change by Tuesday, by Wednesday next week. Yeah, this ridge right here might want to flex a little bit. It's probably going to build in. We can see the leading edge of this warmer air to this declination where the warmer air is, where the maritime polar air actually is to the north. So we can see the leading edge of that. And this is where the hotter temperatures will be residing in the four corners because of this ridge that is in place. The four corners ridge or the desert southwest high that typically builds this time of the year. By Wednesday and Thursday this week, kind of flattens out so we get more of a zonal flow here which might keep temperatures at bay across the northwest as well as the northern tier of the united states and that's kind of what i showed you on the temperature anomaly where it's probably gonna be really warm far above average here across the southern half of the u.s by the middle to the end of next week because of this high that does reside so now let's take a look at the national weather service yeah there's a this is really concerning let me go into Full screen mode here, and you can see excessive heat watches out again for southeastern California, for southern Arizona, even western Arizona. Excessive heat warnings, heat watches, got fire weather warnings out. Not a good situation if you're in the four corners. You would want to see a lot of rain, a lot of the monsoon. It's not going to be coming back for a while at this moment with heat advisories out across southwestern Texas and southern New Mexico. Severe thunderstorm watches and warnings out there for northern Texas, western Oklahoma, and then we got flood watches out for southwestern Kansas. But notice much of the U.S. here looking quiet. Not a lot of weather watches or warnings or advisories out. And we like it to stay that way, but we're probably going to add heat advisories and heat warnings down here. Probably heat watches in the next couple of days for Texas and Oklahoma. So we get temperatures back into around 105, 110 degrees. Got flood watches out for the northeast because of thunderstorms. So yeah, turn around, don't drown if you're encountering flooded roadways. So... I wanted to show you all this. This is the risk of hazardous temperatures. And this really illustrates with what we just talked about. There's a high risk. Yeah, that's a 60% chance that you're going to see dangerously hot temperatures in the desert southwest here. Arizona, Flagstaff, if you're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Tucson, Arizona, if you're in El Paso, just be aware between the 15th and the 18th, you could have temperatures really hot. Um, there's that high risk of excessive heat. There's a moderate risk and a high risk for Florida. So keep that in mind. The humidity and the temperatures that are hot going to make it feel even hotter than it should for this time of the year with even a moderate and slight risk for excessive heat across California, Nevada, and across Utah. So yeah, you know, the heat's going to be a big problem, sadly, across the southern half, the southwestern half of the U.S. in days to come. Now, the heat is back, and it's back in full swing. So when we take a look at our 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, really illustrating with what we looked at on the Euro model, illustrating below average temperature chances across Iowa, kind of in the thickness of that, likely below. 
leaning below average across the other states of the upper Midwest and the northern tier. But look at down here. Temperatures are going to be mighty hot. I mean, we got a 90% chance that temperatures could be well above average across New Mexico, Texas, and also for Florida. So the hot air is going to be really impacting the southern U.S., including cooler weather than average for the northern tier. So a bit of an extreme weather pattern here through the 10-day forecast, and that kind of modulates a little bit through the 21st of July with likely above average temperatures continuing across the deep south of the U.S., including the desert southwest, California, including for Florida, with near average temperatures here for the Great Lakes. Now, I wanted to show you the precipitation outlook. This is why fire weather warnings are out and excessive heat warnings, because the heat air is going to be dry and it's going to be hot. You can see likely below average precipitation the monsoon is not around for the next 10 days unfortunately so a lot of these areas are going to be baking hot um, you're going to want to go swimming you're going to want to water your lawn but conserve water if you all can because this is the time of the year that your monsoon usually should be around and it's not okay it's taking a long break it looks like and then of course for southern texas leaning below average chances for precipitation with above average chances extending across the northern tier of the U.S., the upper Midwest, and the northeastern, including for kind of the lower Midwest, including the Ozarks there. That continues through the next 8 to 14 days. Well, that is all that I have for this video. If this update was very helpful and very entertaining as well on the YouTube channel, I like making these weather forecasts for you all because you guys, as always, or like family to me. You guys love me a lot, and I love you guys a lot. So if you guys want to see more weather content like this across the United States, these local forecasts, including for, Cal um, for Canada, even for Mexico perhaps, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really means a lot. We are at 8,000 subscribers. We're only just 2,000 subs away from actually reaching 10,000 subs. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so hitting the like button, and also making sure you enable all notifications for the YouTube channel by clicking the bell icon and also leaving an awesome comment in the section below this video. Well, that is going to be it in the weather office. As always, my name is David Schlothauer, and have a fantastic rest of your Friday. I'll be back in the office again tomorrow with another weather forecast.